Welcome to the Fit Girl Magic Podcast. If you are ready to find your inner magic, develop great habits, and a rock steady mindset to feel confident, comfortable, and fit in your body, you are in the right place. I am Kim Barnes Jefferson, and I'll be giving you weekly doses of health, fitness, and life tips sprinkled with humor and real talk. If you're ready to be consistent without the stress of perfection, magic makers, it's time to slip into your favorite pair of PJs, grab some coffee, kick back, and listen to today's show. This week's iTunes review is brought to you by Jackie O. Jazz Hands. She writes a great, funny podcast about real topics we all struggle with. Kim gives great advice and support to people to live their best life. Ah, that just fills my heart. Thank you so much for taking the time to write me that five-star review. And for those of you who have yet to leave that five-star review, all you have to do is go on to iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast and do the same thing and I will read it on the air. So thank you so much Jackie O'Jazz Hands. It fills me up when I get read those reviews from the heart. Enjoy the podcast. All right magic makers I got a great show for you today. Today is all about my favorite subject routines. You know actually routines are, are part of what I call the fit girl magic formula where You create strong habits that lead to amazing routines. Those routines lead to consistency, and it's the consistency that finally give us the results that we've been seeking. And, you know, so many of us, you know, we're looking for those results, right? And the results have seemed so elusive to us that we're just like, we feel like we're chasing shadows uh, most of the time. And, you know, I find that in this day and age, routines for many people are boring. I'm doing air quotes. They're boring because in our society, we've been so um, conditioned to think about routines or think about we should have instant gratification, right? If I order something on Monday, if it is not to me by Friday, I am pissed. Um, Same thing with workouts. You know, when I, you know, first started working out, you did a workout for four to six weeks before your trainer changed it. Now there are, you know, CrossFits, Orange Theories, um, F45, Title F- Title Nine Sports. There's always a dip. There's all these different workout modalities that every single day the workout changes. Now I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying bad. I'm just saying that. It has trained us to not look for the consistency. It's conditioned us to say, if things change every single day, then I'm doing it right. Now, possibly for many, but I also like to go back to the old school where I want to see success, right? If I'm squatting and I start out squatting 50 pounds, I would love to see that over the course of that four to six week period that maybe I go from 50 to 55 pounds, I go to 60 pounds, so that I see some progression, right? Because many of us, why we stop is that we don't feel like we're making progress. And so we're like, I'm not making progress, left turn, I'm going to try this. I'm not making progress left turn, I'm going to try this. And we are always like moving ourselves away from the goal, even though we're taking actions, right? But we don't look at our overall goal. Like what the heck am I trying to achieve? You know, how am I defining success? And I remember um, when I first started working with a business coach, she's like, okay, Kim, how do you define success? That made me take this giant pause because I don't feel many people take the time to define what success looks like. And yeah, that was from a business perspective, but the same thing could be said about your fitness. And I've asked every time 
a client starts with me, my first question is, what is your goal? Because then I can start to really understand, have you set a realistic goal? Are you excited about that goal? Can that goal be planned into your life? And is that goal sustainable? I call that my reps formula, right? So as I'm building this routine, I want to make sure that the end goal is realistic. I'm making sure that this routine that I'm building, I'm excited about. And at the end of the day, it's sustainable, right? That I can actually map it into my life. And that is where it's the most, that's the most important thing in, you know, many will say routines are boring, but you know what? I say routines are what is the guy, the, the kind of the, Gateway, that's the word I'm looking for, the gateway to success. And, you know, it helps us to establish priorities, right? It helps us to stop procrastinating and it helps us to track our goals. So let's just break that down, right? So it helps us to get stuff done because I'm sitting down and I'm saying, I've defined my goal. All right. So let's just make up a goal so that we have a tangible example. So here we are. I want to say I want in the next six weeks, or let's take 12 weeks. Let's make it 12 weeks. In the next 12 weeks, I want to um, drop a dress size. I want to, in the next six weeks, I want to drop six pounds, okay? I'm oh, sorry. I keep saying six pound, weeks. Ah! In the next 12 weeks, I want to drop six pounds, I want to drop a dress size. So like, that's how I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm defining my success. So because I've defined my success, I can start to put together a plan. I can start to look at my routines to see if, is what I'm doing on a day in and day out basis, does it lead me to that end result? Okay. Also, when I'm writing out this plan, it's really easy for us to start to procrastinate. We procrastinate by saying, I have to find the right diet. I have to find the right trainer, coach, gym schedule, blah, 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 blah. If you've said that, I know some of you are shaking your head right along with me. So it's not doing 50 different things to help me get to that six pound weight loss. It's not doing 50 different things that's going to help me drop that dress size. It is me setting my mindset that, you know what, I, I'm going to do this, right? Deciding, making that decision that I'm actually going to make it being so crystal clear about what it is that I'm trying to achieve and so connected to my goal that I see myself in that, 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 down that one dress size. And maybe it's in your closet. So if it is in your closet, take it out and, you know, put it uh, in, in front of your closet, put it, you know, um, my closet has a closet door that I can actually hang something on. So I could put it right there. So I see it day in and day out and I can start to see myself in it. And here's where I challenge you to not be like, Oh, uh, 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 right. Here's where I challenge you to be like, you know what? I can't wait to get into, I don't know if it's dress or a pair of pants and just start to just feel it in your body, right? That's how you connect to it because that's what's going to give you the courage to keep going because I'm going to tell you, there are going to be some speed bumps and some days you might feel like you got ran over <laughs> and you were the speed bump and some days it's just going to go swimmingly and it's going to feel effortless. But why I'm asked, why we're talking about routines is that routines drive your motivation. Your routines give you the patience so that you will succeed. All right. And this is the perfect time of year to talk about it because I feel, you know, aside from Corona throwing us into a giant loop, and we'll talk about that a little later, uh, fall is the perfect time to start putting together routines because, you know, depending on where you are, your kids may or may not be going back to school or some form of in-person schooling or some person of hybrid schooling, but you're going to have to like rearrange your schedule around how do you manage schooling for your kids, either transportation or getting them set up on Zoom or what have you. So it's the perfect 
time to kick this off. And so the first step is define what you, duh, define your success, okay? And I don't want that to, it to make you feel stressed out, right? It shouldn't feel stressed out. So in order for you to define it, I just write it down. What is my success? And I challenge you to write it on a piece of paper. And just this, the next few exercises, I challenge you to physically like go old school, pull out a piece of paper and start writing on it. You know, one of my favorite things is my yellow pad. Me and my yellow pad, I buy them by the dozen because I like to write things down. That's how I'm able to start to visualize in my brain and crystallize my um, decisions. All right. So we got there. So as, as you're starting to define yourself, doesn't, you know, now we start to look at our routines and do they make you feel good? Right. You know, does, you know, does the goals that you set for yourself, do they make you feel good? Do they make you feel like a winner or do they stress you out? Now you should have a little stress for your goals. You know, it should give you a little pressure, but you shouldn't be like, Oh, sweet Georgia Brown. I can't believe it. I don't know. I want you to really think about those, those goals. And now we're going to look at what your current routine is, you know, based on what you said. So if I said I wanted to lose those six pounds, I'm now going to start to look at what my current routine is. You know, it's like, what do I do day in and day out? And so, you know, is it, am I getting up and am I getting up and working out? Am I tracking my food? Am I sleeping? You know, what am I doing each day? And this also includes your work also includes your stress because, it all counts, right? It all adds up. I mean, so many people want it to be, you know, if you eat X number of calories and they're 500 calories less each day, it's 3,500 calories, 3,500 calories equal pound and bada boom, bada bing, I'm losing the weight. Yeah, I wish so. Um, My mentor says, your body is like a thermometer, a thermometer, not a calculator. Yeah. Let that one sink in. Pretty, pretty powerful right there. So, Take so start looking at the routine and then you know sleep on it, right? So write down the routine today, sleep on it. Then I want you to I want you to um take out that yellow pad of paper, it could be white or any other color, and write um on top what's working, put a line down the middle of the paper, and then what's not working. And go through the routine and based on what your goal is. So if you said, you know, you want to lose those six pounds, drop that dress size, we're going to look at the routines and we're going to be very honest with ourselves. And if you can't be honest with yourself, that's when, you know, you hire a coach or you have that friend who is not afraid to tell you the truth. Okay. So write down on the left side, what's working out of all the things that you're doing in your daily life currently, what's working for you, right? To the right, what's not working for you? And write that down. And that's going to be pretty telling. And, you know, it's the reason why I want to harsh on this is because our routines are our guidepost, right? There are like, if life was a bowling alley, you know how um, you have like that, the, the woods in the middle and off to the left and off to the right, you have the, where the gutter ball is. This is, this is what routines are. Routines are that gutter ball. And if it was say like, you know, an electric fence, it would give you a, a buzz or a zap to be like, Hey girl, you off course. Unfortunately, maybe I should invent that. I don't know, but something that tells you, Hey girl, you're off course. Okay. And success should feel like it, you're like, you're marching towards it. Like it should feel easy. It should feel effortless. And so as I'm writing down what's working, what's not working on the not working side, is this something that I can easily change? So I want you to go through and highlight what can you easily change? You know, um, back when I was in corporate, I used to like work redonkulous hours and 
and I was a stress ball. So one of the things um, that my doctor told me to do in order to reduce my stress, she, she was like, you know, you have to be consistent with your exercise. And at that point, I was not consistent with my exercise. And so I found a, a class and it was Mondays at 530, Monday and Wednesdays at 530 and Saturday mornings. And I told myself that that was my key to leave class. That was our class. That was my key to leave work. That I wanted to take this 5:30 kickboxing class. And that meant I had to like, you know, pull the whistle at five o'clock so I could make it to this class. And I looked forward to it. And that made it so much easier to go to. So I want you to think about as I'm writing this list, I want to look forward to it. I want to feel excited about it. And if you're not feeling excited about it and it's something you're doing, is there something that you can tweak? to make yourself feel more excited about it. Or if you're not feeling excited about it, is it something that you shouldn't be, should be doing? You know, um, I had a new client start with me back in January and she had a lot of weight to lose. And she's like, all right. Um, before she's like, girl, I'm ready to do this. I'm losing the weight. Awesome. Let's do it. And I said, okay, let's talk. Let's talk goals. She told me your goals. And she's like, and you know, I'm working with you, but I also signed up for the six week kickboxing class. And I was like, Hmm. do you like kickboxing? And she was like, well, they told me I was going to lose 30 pounds. Okay. But it's six days a week, one hour. You got a lot of weight to, you know, like you, you, you have to, you have to love it. Like if you're going to do it six days a week, you're going to have to love it and look forward to it. Because, um, back in the day I used to teach a boot camp, and it was a boot camp that you signed up for six weeks and it was Monday through Friday. And I will tell you making these numbers up, Monday through Friday, it was Monday through Friday for six weeks. And so I'd say if there was 50 people signed up for this boot camp, weeks one, week two, we had like, you know, 40, 50 people, you know, Monday through Friday. By week four, it was like 10, 15 people. Like half the class would drop off because it was the commitment. And so I always ask people, you know, challenge the commitment level because at the beginning, we're all like, woohoo, I'm totally doing this. I'm rocking the cas bar. Then when the rubber meets the road, you're like, ah, my damn, like this is just hard, like, you know, or it the it doesn't excite you. So I always I always tell people to go for the lowest common denominator or break it down as good, better, best, right? What's the best scenario? What's a better scenario? And what's the best scenario? And then you kind of can start to toggle in again, creating part of a routine. Um, and you know, it's what I call your non-negotiables. And it's something that I talk about a lot with my clients because, you know, it's really easy to sign up for the six week boot camp and you miss a day or two during the week and you're like, Oh, I'm horrible. I'll start again on Monday. Right. And it's so easy to be in that space. And I don't want you to get into that space and I don't want you to start, you know, uh, biting off more than you can chew and then hating it and sitting on the couch and be like, Oh, I wasted all that money. Right. I want you to really think about it before you like, you know, someone's, anyone can promise you a 30 pound weight loss. Anyone can promise you that, you know, and I want you, and I, I want that for her, but I also want it to be enjoyable, right? I don't want it to feel like a grind. And as, as much as many people say weight loss, you know, weight loss is a struggle or weight loss is a grind. It doesn't have to be right. You can choose differently. That's one of my favorite expressions. You can choose differently. Okay. So as I'm going through my, you know, my list of like, what's working, what's not working. I also look at how is this building towards my goal? Is this helping me get to my, you know, six pound, six pound weight loss. And if it's not, I got to start reviewing, reviewing my daily, uh, my, my daily activities. The other thing I like people to do at this time is to think about what's their ideal scenario, right? You know, like ideally say I'm sticking with this six pound weight loss. Ideally, you know, am I working out at a specific time? What kind of workout am I doing? Am I enjoying the workout? Am I working out by myself? Do I have people? Am I in a class? Do I have an accountability partner that I check in with? What am I doing? Like, what does this scene look like? Because the more I can kind of start to see 
the road to success, the more excited I am. And the more excited I am, the more I will do it, right? So then, you know, as we go through, so I've, I say to myself, it's in, the, it's in 12 weeks. So what are the milestones, right? So I like to do what I call two-week sprints. This is what keeps at least me, because I, you know, we all have that kind of um, short-term ADD, right? If I am not losing the weight, I'm not visibly seeing it, I think I need to make another left turn, right? I talked about that earlier. So I always start with what I call two-week sprints. So in the next two weeks, you know, what am I going to commit to, right? So it's like in the next two weeks, I'm going to commit to tracking my food. Or in the next two weeks, I'm going to commit to going to the gym three days a week. I'm, and I'm going to or commit to water. Right? I'm going to pick these small micro commitments so that I can see progress. Because I will tell you, the scale might not move for me that maybe in the first week. It may, or it might move in the first week and not in the second or in the second week and not in the first, right? So I need, for me, I can't focus on the scale. And I encourage my clients not to focus on the scale. I encourage them to come up with um, non-scale victories, things that you can see or feel that you are doing so that you're like, okay, I'm on the right path. I'm on the right path. I'm on the right path. So that in the, the two week block, you're like, okay, I've tracked my food and you, you do what I call a plus Delta again, as I track my food, am I seeing how am I going over my calories? Am I going over my, you know, am I hitting my protein numbers or am I hitting my carb numbers? You know, what's happening with the food? What's happening with my workouts? Like, am I actually going to the workout? Am I actually enjoying my workouts? Right. So it's here every two weeks. It gives us a chance to, you know, Fine tune the radio, as I like to say, you know, for those of you guys who don't remember, but back in the day, you used to have to take a radio and like turn the dial to get it to where it was. It wasn't just like, you know, punching a button and you landed on the right station. You had to actually um, tune it in. And then it's, then from here, like once I've kind of said, you know, what's not working, what's working, then I can start to create a daily schedule, right? And some of you might be like, oh, I don't like to be pigeon, you know, put into a box. Me either. I am a structured, I'm a structured, unstructured person. I always say an organized, disorganized person. Um, So what that is, is that I like to give myself some guidance, but I don't want my day to be like 845, do this, 915, do this, right? And I don't like that. I like to just say, you know, give myself three things to do every single day. And so that could be three. So it's three tasks that I could complete in the day. So it could be recording this podcast, right? That's one thing. It could be um, writing an email to my my listeners. It could be um, uh, replying to clients, right? So those are three things that I'm going to do on my, three things I'm going to do on my list. So that at the end of the day, those three things are done and I feel good. There are times when sometimes I finish those three, I'm, I blow my mind with my efficiency And I'm like, all right, do I feel like I have the energy to do a fourth thing? And sometimes I do. And sometimes I'm like, you know what? I'm tapping out for the day. Versus having that long list of 500 things, you get to five, you feel like crap because you didn't get to the rest of them. Choose those, you know, um, there is, uh, I'm trying to think of his name right now. Um... John Dorsey, that's his name, John Dorsey. He is the um, inventor of Twitter. Um, He also was the co-founder of Square, the um, credit card company uh, or the credit card processor. Anyway, he, he comes up with his three most important tasks of the day. So I've been following that principle for a while and I really enjoy it. So think about what ways can help you be productive because for many people, what they tell me why they can't work out is they don't have the time. And so you have to decide what are your most important tasks of the day. So my most important task, I, like I said, you know, it's recording this podcast, sending out an email and getting back to a client, right? But then for me, I will say, I'm going to start my day with exercise. 
because I know if I don't start my day with exercise, I will find a reason not to work out. I will find a reason. Uh, you know, I know it's my gym, but I know me. And I know that if I don't work out by 9 a.m., I'm going to, it's, it's, I'm going to put it down the list, put it down the list, put it down the list. Okay. So that's, a, that's a most important ta- task for me. So it happens first thing, as soon as I get up, I work out, then I get into work mode. Okay. So I want you to think about, you know, how are you going to organize your day? And it could be very loose. You know, there's another um, person um, who sets up their day by, um, activity. So one day could be like, you know, you're getting back to clients. One day you're, um, you know, it's leg day and one day it's back day. You know, you could do all the, you could do that as well. Figure out, feel around with what, how it works best for you to organize your routine, you know, play with it and, 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 and think about it because as you go through the routine, we're, you're, you're tweaking it, right? We're tuning in that dial because it's, not everything is going to work the first time you do it. That's life, right? But, you know, I've been playing with my routine, you know, I've been working from home for the past 10 years. And many of you have just kind of been forced into working from home since um, Corona locked down many of us or put us in some type of hybrid state. And so here's where you have to have that flexible accountability where we're just, we're playing, we're seeing what's working, what's not working and going with that. And so what I, you know, as I'm kind of winding down the podcast, one of the things I want you to think about is that it's not the amount of activity, right? The biggest thing I can tell you is reduce the scope, right? So if you are someone who worked out, you know, if you were going to the gym and you worked out for an hour at the gym, maybe at home, it's a 30 minute workout, right? Maybe it's a 20 minute workout, whatever it is, but it's still happening. So even though I might have reduced the scope of what is done, I'm still sticking to being someone who moves my body, right? So that's where I want you to focus on. Um, And, you know, as, especially in Corona times, it's really challenging because all of us have just like had our schedules just like blown to bits. And so the biggest thing I always say to people is that think about like going back to the beginning, think about what you want your routine to look like. Does your routine include working out? And if it does include working out and you play around with where it is in the schedule. Maybe you can work out at night. Great. Or maybe you can, you can stick it in at lunchtime, whatever. Maybe you can stick in a workout while your kids are doing their form of hybrid school. Um, But figure out the same thing with food. You know, the biggest way that I've, you know, challenged my clients to stay on track during, you know, times that we're at home, create a menu, right? meal prep. So that way you know what you're eating and you're not left like foraging around for crap. Um, and as you're shopping, don't buy the crap, you know, if, or I always, I have two ways that I categorize crap. There are, there's always wiggle room in your nutrition. I, as I, I will always tell you, there's always room for fun foods, but if it's a fun food that sends you off the deep end, don't bring it in your house just yet, especially since we're not leaving our houses for, you know, long periods of time. Don't bring it in your house, right? So just focus on bringing in the foods that sustain you, right? And not, and I'm not saying, oh, you, you're never going to have a cookie, but I'm saying we shouldn't be baking cookies every day, right? It's can we find healthier options to give us something to do? I know that, you know, many of us have kids and the kids like to bake and all of that magical stuff, but can we find other things to do that will sustain our overall goal? You know, there's other things with your routine. How do you, you know, build connection, right? Can you use your time in your routine to connect with your kids. So maybe it's not just doing schoolwork with them. Maybe, you know, the big puzzle thing or, you know, watching a documentary or just sitting and like just talking about how, you know, this whole crazy time makes people feel. You know, at the end of the day, what I know is routines help us become the kind of person we want to be. And, you know, there are 
several successful people, including Oprah, you know, she starts her day every day with exercise. You know, she has a big salad for lunch. She reads before bed and she does daily gratitude. And I have a very similar practice. You know, I move my body for at least 30 minutes a day. I have a big ass salad for lunch. I get seven hours of sleep. I, I, love to journal every day. And so that's what is kind of like the um, pillars of my my routine. But, you know, each person is different and each person will come up with their own non-negotiables. And so I want you to start thinking about your current routine and start seeing how does it work? How does it guide you into your um how does it guide you to your success? Or maybe your, your schedule isn't guiding you to your success. Or maybe you haven't even defined what success looks like. And so that's step one. Define what success looks like so that we can start to build a routine. And if that's something that you're like, hey, I just, I'm like lost. I just need a little more guidance on that. I got you, girl. I got you, magic maker. Um, all you have to do is download my 50 routines to start. I'm not saying you're doing all 50. I'm just saying this is a great brainstorming tool just to get you moving and a groove in. So I will put the link in the show notes so that you have a way to download that. Um, If there's anyone you know that needs help building a routine, make sure you screenshot this and tag them and tag me so I know um, that you found this helpful. And um, that way we can spread the routine love. Well, thank you so much for listening and have a fabulous day. Thank you for listening to the Fit Girl Magic Podcast. If you've made it this far, yay. I'm thinking you enjoyed the show. Let's continue the conversation on Instagram. You can find me at Kim Jefferson Coach. In order for me to keep sharing this message, do me a favor and leave me a five-star review on iTunes. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss an episode. New episodes are available every Wednesday. The Fit Girl Magic Podcast is intended to provide you with tips, tools, and strategies that will help you make better decisions about your health. I really appreciate your feedback and your support. Thank you so much.